We are back. Okay. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. It is a real pleasure and uh, a very much an overdue one to welcome back uh, Guy Lawson to the program. He is the author of, well, like six books now? How many, like, like well, six of you know, them are? Well, depends how you count them. Depends how you count them. <laughs> well, I mean, count, well, count them any way you want. I mean, uh, the... Uh, I got a new book. That's what I got. Well... <laughs> Uh, there's Octopus, which is one of my favorite books. And it's my favorite, actually. That's my favorite. Uh, it's a great book about uh, sort of like a, um, uh, a uh, what would you call it? Uh, a a guy con man get, getting conned. Exactly. Um, yeah. And um, uh, the dudes and the arms, which ultimately was made into the movie War Dogs. Oh yeah. yeah. Um and uh, uh the first one about the brotherhoods uh, the brotherhoods about uh, uh, p uh police and uh, mafia which and, maybe it may be coming back as a movie that's something that's really happening like right now. I just read oh. the script this week. There's a new script and it's actually well, you don't congratulate till the check clears but uh All right. Well, then it, I'll hold off on knock that. on wood. Um Yeah, and, the, the the script actually made me laugh. So, you know, it's kind of got that good fellows vibe to it. So, that's kind of Oh, cool. good. And uh, your latest hot dog money inside the biggest scandal in the history of college sports already uh, has been, it's not even released until tomorrow, and it's already been, uh, the movie rights have already been bought. But, all right, before we get into that for one uh, moment, yeah. okay, because we've had conversations about Donald Trump over the years, um, sure uh, both on and off air, um, what is your sense, I, I don't know if you heard about this, but he was found guilty of 34 charges no. uh, at the, no. yesterday. <laughs> um, uh, say it ain't so, Joe. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Uh, what's your your sense? And I should say, you're uh, a Canadian. Um, I mean, you've been in this country for a long time, but you still have yeah. a little bit of that uh, sort of like perspective of 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 being outside uh, of this country in some way and i think it gives you a good view of things what is your view yeah. of what uh, what's going on here well I, I guess i have like a couple maybe three things to say um one of which is that i used to be a lawyer and um criminal law was my particular area of interest and it's where i really got my best grades and things and um what trump's got now is he's basically putting the legal system on trial he's trying to it's, it's nullification of the rule of law. It's not even of the jury anymore. It's just the whole idea that there's law and the juries can reach verdicts that they are valid. You know, I'm reading um, SPQR, which is Mary Beard's book on the history of Rome. And it, I'm right at the moment, like maybe ironically or not, at the first century BCE before Common Era. And there is this rise of authoritarianism going on in the Roman Empire at this time. And I think that people might perceive it as like, like it all happened on one Julius Caesar did it all, but it was not like that. It was, it was spasmodic. It was in, you know, it was in, it came in intervals. It came in really unpredictable ways, but at the same time in hindsight, very predictably. And, you know, to me, it seems like this country, there's like a, a sense of entropy in this country, like just this lack of willingness to, um, to, you know, a, a, a very large, significant number of people just kind of crave strong men and crave solutions to their problems, their complicated problems, crime, immigration, you know, the rise of feminism, de de diversity, inclusion, and equity. These things are, you know, they're, they're complicated things to achieve. And it seems like one side of the argument is, well, I don't give a crap anymore. And the other side is, this kind of doesn't have anything much to say in reply. I mean, you know, look, I... I became a citizen after they murdered Jamal Khashoggi because in my business, like that's a relevant thing to think about. If you just have a green card, that's not going to cut it in this country, which was what Khashoggi had. So I became a citizen in 2021. It'll be my first ever presidential vote. I'm not conflicted about how I'm going to vote the first time around. But having said that, do I wish, you know, my, my college sophomore rising uh, third year student twins were more enthusiastic about their choice of Joe Biden? Yeah, man. Do I wish there was someone younger and uh, more vigorous? Uh, yes, I do. But, you know, so I, I you know, I, I think the, 
the thing that's happening with Trump is not that Trump is such an original, it's that he's tapping into some deeper well that is very distressing. And it, you know, the joke about history is it doesn't repeat, but it rhymes, right? And I'm not saying this is the Roman Empire, but turning into the, you know, the, the, the Roman democracy turning into the Roman Empire, but there is something like really amiss about this society when you have people who are negating the rule of law. And, and it, it's sort of like January 6th, you wonder what's on the other side of this. So in my career, as you introduced me and then said I'm Canadian, it's like, it's almost like that Canadianness, along with my Australian years and my, it's like my outsiderdom has given me a kind of unique perspective. Like I'll give you an example, War Dogs, right? Like that book, people say, where do you find your stories? I found that story on the front page of the New York Times. The New York Times had a story about two kids who'd ripped off the Pentagon and fooled the whole world and the Justice Department was gonna bring them to justice. It was all absolute BS. It was exactly the other way around. The authorities didn't know how to get a whole ton of weaponry into Afghanistan and Iraq without dealing with gun runners. So they got these kids to go be their gun runners. So I think that having an outside perspective, as I like to think I have, has been very like defining for my career. So if you look at it, I wrote a book about corruption in the New York City Police Department. I wrote a book about corruption on Wall Street. I wrote a book about corruption on in the Pentagon, and now I've got a book about corruption in sports. Like, what's what's the thing in common, right? You know, it's corruption hmm? and America, right? Like, it's there's something like in the 21st century that is off, and and I do think that the mainstream media is a significant piece of it, and that's why I admire so much what you've achieved with the Majority Report, which is you kind of got to go off the grid. I mean, in the I'd like to think in the uh, thoughtful way that you do it, as opposed to like, you know, like the lunatic right conspiracy theory people. But at the same time, it's like Donald Trump is, is not, he's not norm busting. The norms are busting themselves in my view. I mean, it's interesting because as you say that, like I think about um, uh, Sam Israel in uh, the octopus and the reason why he got so easily conned into believing yeah. that there was, I mean, folks have to read this, this story. It's just, in, it's yeah. insane. But he ended up believing yeah. essentially there was like a, a, like a, like a, like an international fed that was giving out money to rich people because he had experienced so much of the corruption on wall street that he just right. assumed applied this to everything else in the world. And on some level, like there is a quality of the phenomena of Donald Trump. And, you know, even in, in, in your latest book, there's also this sort of the same thing where, you know, when uh, your your lead character actually sort of like goes to uh, the uh, NCAA and, you know, uh, tells, this is what's going on. Yeah. And they're all like, oh, OK. And, like there's no <laughs> like people like this is so the way we you, operate. If you, if, you, if you envelop yourself with lies. Right. It, it's a it's a it's a it's a strange kind of phenomena, a psychological phenomena, which I. I think Sam Israel perfectly personifies and the NCAA, you just start to believe that everyone's lying and everything's a lie. And therefore you just become territorial. You just want to get over that day. And it's, and that's Trump is like that, right? Trump's just trying to get through each day. And, and if everyone's lying, everyone's a piece of crap, everything's meaningless. If the world is just like this, this con game, then why not con? I mean, it's funny because Sam's out of prison now and we've been in touch. <laughs> and he said to me the other week, he said, you know, I have to read Octopus just to remember what the hell I did. So it's, 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 <laughs> it's like you kind of, you know, if you look at Trump in a way, it's pathetic, right? Like he's living inside this scrim of delusion. It's, it's, it's a form of, in my view, a mental kind of, uh, uh, you know, that, this is why he, I mean, apart from his projection, I mean, people are starting to cotton onto that. The, the idea that he accuses everyone of doing exactly what he's doing himself. But it's, it's, imagine living inside that world where everything revolves around you, where all things are about you're the victim. And, and like being a parent and a husband and a uh, Oh, he's person not, the, I mean, dinner he's with, barely those things. He's those things I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, or the like thing, the illegally. things that we like. Yeah, the things that we consider, like I consider my reality, right? Like, right, right. You know, 
I said to my daughter this morning, you should make your bed and clean up your room. And I didn't say it to be mean. I said it because it's like a good sign of like developing mature skills, like just interacting on that simple level. Like does Donald Trump say to, you know, Don Jr., you know, you really shouldn't, what, cheat on your wife or, you know, lie on <laughs> In the media, like, where's the moral guidance? Where's the kind of sense of oh, beginning, gosh. middle, and end? Don't I know, you think I know. So, don't you think your sister's hot? <laughs> yeah. She looks good on TV. Okay. But, but, I, but there's know, 70 million people who go with that, right? 70, 80 million people who go with that. Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. And, you know, when you said this thing about this, like, concept where everybody, you know, the, 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 the characters in the context of your books and also, you know, in, in America where everybody sort of feels like everything's a lie, uh, and yeah. there's a certain nihilism. We had a, uh, an interview that I think was now six years ago, uh, with a woman, uh, Emily Ogden, who wrote a book about, um, mesmerism and yeah, I remember the book. and yeah. the, 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 the dynamic there with, with Joseph Mesmer at the time. And that's where the idea of yeah. mesmer came was that yeah, yeah. he's up there saying like, everybody's lying, but right. you and I are lying. You know, that. Like I'm lying in service of you that like right. you're in on it with me. And so therefore it's like in a world where everybody's lying, you got to pick your essentially your uh, champion and I'm your champion. It's like the the, the, the yeah. Doobie brothers, what a fool believes. He yeah. sees. And, and this is, I think like the dynamic that Donald Trump uh, uh, is uh, drawing on. Um, but there's the, a thing within that, right? There's a thing within that. So Mesmer, you have to sort of see it from the people listening to Mesmer or listening to these conspiracy theories. It's like it appeals to something within them, right? Like there's a need within that, an emptiness. So in this case, in Trump's case, I think it's largely race. It's largely age, economic dis dislocation, um, and grievance, just grievance against the world. And so um, there's that con men don't, con people in the in the, in the raw they con people because they're they're appealing to something so sam israel for example you're talking about octopus why did he manage to raise 450 million dollars with a complete fantasy right there's a bunch of different reasons many of which sam understood some of which he didn't but at least one of them biggest one is that he was offering them something they wanted they wanted 18 percent return they wanted a really big return on their money without having to think about it. And a lot of that was other hedge funds who were called funds of funds. So people were managing money just to give it to another person to manage and then taking a cut. That was most of where his money came from. And Sam knew those people knew. They, they kind of knew they were being lied to. Like that's the thing within the thing, right? Like you kind of know it's a lie. And Sam, and that bred in Sam a certain amount of contempt for those people. So it's like that gaslighting there's a woman I, I was going to write about. I didn't write about her, but you probably might remember her. It's like, the, I think they did a Netflix series about her, like the bad vegan woman. <laughs> Do you remember that? Did you come across that? She had a restaurant in Manhattan called Pure, and she was like a, an attractive food impresario. Anyway, her boyfriend, partner, gaslit her into thinking that he could let her dog live forever. <laughs> And so she stole millions of dollars from her restaurant and blah, 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 and winds up on Netflix. But the point about it is, is that there was some neediness in her, like some element of desire. And uh, that's what Trump is tapping into. That's what, you know, I don't, you know, it's the same thing as Trump stakes and Trump university. Like they're obviously just stupid concepts, but people want to live in that world. They'd rather have that than their reality. Well, that, that, that series you're talking about, that was called The Bad Vegan, right, on Netflix. Yeah. I watched that, too. It was interesting because I thought it was one of those Yeah, cults. I know her. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, yeah. then, I mean, that that's a fascinating story. I thought it was one of those cult documentaries when I started it. And then in the end, it kind of is, even if it's a cult of one, the guy that she's yeah. uh, she's duped by. And that's part of what this is, too, right? It's emptiness filled by a cult-like mentality, where if we're in post-truth America or nothing matters and we're all, and there's this nihilism that's crept in. I think a lot of it's late-stage capitalism, too, right? Just people feeling so alienated. Um, then, then basically, it, the simpler answer is to join this cult. And MAGA is a cult right. in, in that way, or Trump's it's followers solves, it's solves. are. 
S similar it solves thinking. things, right? Yeah. 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 It, it's like I don't have to worry about um, things. I've got this one thing that I can believe in, and that simplifies and sharpens my reality, and it makes everyone else a jerk. Yep. And, you know, it's not for nothing that one of the biggest um, components of that appeal is to own the libs, is to inflict emotional distress on others, which is a form of sadism, right? It's like it's it's like I take pleasure in your misery. Like that's a big part of the appeal. How this place, you know, how does a Philadelphia suburban mom vote for Donald Trump? Like how does you know the 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 arizona the maricopa county you know soccer mom tell herself that this is a good idea for her kids that things are going to get better for her kids if they just have four more years of absolute chaos and and uh because i mean you know at the very least now what's clear is is that he's been convicted he'll appeal and all that but at the very least if he's elected president there will be the specter of imprisonment looming over him or you know, re-offending re and breaking parole. I mean, he'll be on parole, for God's sakes, or probation, whatever the term is. Oh it's like, you got to go check in with my pro PO, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, um, all right. Well, let's yeah. let's let's talk more. It's been a while, hasn't it, Sam? It's been a while. It has. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I just what one more thing. Like, I heard, I mean, as, you, as you're saying that about, you know, it providing something they can believe in where they don't, there's, there's, there is a certain fundamentalism, uh, that allows them. Like I heard a guy, uh, interviewed by the AP, um, uh, the, the AP, uh, this morning, like is saying, uh, I would never, uh, I would never vote for a convicted felon for president, except, except, but I don't believe this is a real conviction, and I don't believe that he's. Oh, I'm. I can. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. Like that's the. Yeah. They just sort of like I've already. You know, I may have to do a little bit of work, a tiny bit of work into working around these uh, first uh, yeah. first order principles. But the first order principle is I'm voting for Donald Trump. He's my guy. So and that, that just falls. That just reminds me of like Sam Israel. So he he was this um, traitor, and he pretended to be this. Uh, like technical trader. So he had all these walls of computer screens and these all these different graphs going up and down that looked like what they would call now algorithms. And it was horse crap, right? It was just absolute made up stuff. And listen to Sam, he'd have these investors come in and putting 50, 100 million bucks into his fund. He thought that they knew it was bull crap. Like, they, they, I don't know where, where you are on swear words on this podcast. I don't want to get you into the potty mouth category, but it, they, he knew that they knew. But what were they getting from him? They were getting 18%. It was made up, but it was 18% a year. The exact same number, by the way, that Bernie Madoff was doing across town. So there's some like set of underlying logic to this. So what's that guy getting? He's getting he doesn't have to think. He's getting that he can be racist and anti-woke and all the things. He can be like a jerk to his wife or, you know, honk his horn at an African-American person and just he doesn't have to think about his bigotry and his entitlement and his privilege. You know, there's no challenge to it, right? He's the yep. victim. Yep. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.